This is Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas. Uh, today's uh, saying of the day is never watch sausage or laws being made. Sandy, today we're going to be talking about some unusual laws that have passed and uh, and how they passed and and uh, different ones. I'm going to read here in in California. You cannot eat frogs that died in a frog jumping contest. They used to have frog jumping contest, and uh, you know, PETA has made sure that was stopped. But at one time, they they would jump, and then the ones that died from jumping, and they would encourage them to jump by you know uh, putting something hot near them, and uh, they uh, they'd fry them. And that uh, they thought that was just uh, uh, highly barbaric, and uh, they outlawed uh, eating them. You could still make them jump. They finally outlawed that. But uh, that was caused by a certain group that felt like that it was a abuse of animals. I had a, a situation come up when I was a state senator. Uh, Lubbock needed an additional $8 million to open their teaching hospital, their county teaching hospital. And I went to work getting it done. I had the votes in the Senate. And uh, it was a uh, bill was chaired over in the House by State Representative Chris Miller. She was from Fort Worth. And I had never dealt with her much. I just didn't know her. And uh, uh, Representative Bill Heatley from Paducah told me, you got to go over and see her. And get her to get that bill out of committee or carry it or, or help you out some way on the funding for the teaching hospital. So I went over to see her, and, and usually if you're a state representative and the senator comes to your side of the building, you know, they're, they're going to be begging for something. I mean, there's something they need. And so I went in and I talked to her about the teaching hospital and why it was needed and how it would help the state and, and – uh, but every time I'd pause to let her get in the conversation, she'd get in the conversation about a bill she had that uh, outlawed using live rabbits in dog races. You know, they have this mechanical rabbit that they use now in dog races, and, and it stays on course and everything. But they used to have uh, uh, live rabbits in some dog races. I've only seen that one time, and that was Juarez, Mexico. I was in El Paso for the uh, uh, Sun Bowl. Texas Tech was playing North Carolina, and we went over to the dog races. And some of the races, they'd use a live rabbit. And a live rabbit, lots of times, when they're getting real close, I'm going to make a U-turn, <laughs> and the dogs go the wrong way. And, you know, it's hard to control. But when, they, when the dogs catch the rabbit, it's not a pretty scene. And um, so I, I could see why she was trying to outlaw it. So finally, I said, look, I need some help on this teaching hospital legislation. If you help me, I'll carry your bill over in the Senate. She had passed it in the House, was complaining she couldn't get a sponsor in the Senate. So I agreed to be the sponsor. And I was hoping that it wouldn't get any publicity that, uh, you know, that I was introducing the bill to not let them use a live rabbit and dog race, which I was for it, but, it, you know, I, a lot of people are going to wonder if that's your biggest priority. And uh, I, so I introduced it on a late Friday. And uh, that way, uh, you know, I thought maybe people wouldn't see it that, that much. And in the Saturday and Sunday and Monday, Lubbock newspaper and the Amarillo newspaper didn't mention it. And I thought I dodged a bullet. But on Tuesday, uh, there was a little story that said recent bills introduced by local uh, representatives and senators. And there it was, you know, making it a crime to use a live rabbit and dog race by hands. And the uh, first call I got was about 6.30 on Tuesday morning. And a guy named Freddie Howard, a friend of mine from Brownfield that really grew up in Meta, you know, in in West Texas a town called Meadow. It's pronounced Meta. And uh but he grew up in Meta and he said, uh, what what are you doing introducing a bill on live rabbit and a dog race? You know what I mean? What is that a big deal? What why would you do that? 
and I explained to him, and it, you know, it made sense to him. And I got several calls, and I had people joking with me, and and uh, we finally uh, got something passed, but it was different, and the bill, I think, eventually died. And uh, so, you know, I was glad to get out of it, and I got my teaching hospital money, and so every, everything worked out okay, and I took a little ribbing from a few people. And I got to Washington, and uh, I was on the Ag Committee my first session, and the chairman of the Ag Committee uh, was a guy named Tom Foley from the state of Washington. And his wife was real big in animal rights and everything, and he mentioned to me, he said, I, I need somebody to carry a bill for me that my wife's wanting done. I, as chairman, I, I just it doesn't look good if I'm carrying her legislation in. And uh, I said, well, uh, you know, I'll be glad to help you. What What is the bill? He said, it makes it illegal to use a live rabbit in a dog race. And I said, oh, me. <laughs> We're off to the races again. But it never did pass. And I, I think that finally people caught on that there was enough opposition out there that they stopped using a live rabbit in a dog race. And, you know, sometimes you get caught up in things and, uh, and people want a bill introduced and, there are a lot of bills get introduced because somebody complained to a representative or senator in the state legislature about something, and they'll introduce a bill, but they never do push it very hard. And uh, so that that's, you know, in the legislative process, as I said, the saying of the day, don't watch them make sausage or laws. You know, either one can make you sick. One of the bills unusual is in Colorado, and it's, that you can't use upholstery on outdoor furniture. Now, I don't know who got that passed or why, but it, it had to do somebody dealing in furniture. Uh, they didn't want upholstery being on outdoor furniture. So there's probably some manufacturer, and they had some employees, and they worked some representative pretty hard. Um, in Indiana, there's there's it's illegal to catch fish with your bare hands or to use dynamite. And um, if you're fishing with your bare hands, it's called noodling. And uh, there's legislation on noodling has passed in Texas in the last 30 or 40 years. And, and I, you know, if somebody wants to go catch fish with their bare hands, it's not going to bother me one way or the other. It's not high on my agenda. But somebody may pass a bill on it, and it may not be high on their agenda, but it may be helping some other bill. There's a lot of horse trading that goes on in the legislative process. Not as much as some people think, but, but there is some. You know, I had a senator from Port Arthur one time was having trouble on a bill. Uh, had to do with alligators, and he came over and talked to me. And I said, look, I can be for you or against. It doesn't matter. In in Lubbock, it's not going to be a big deal, no matter how I vote, uh, that uh, alligators in you know, West Texas is not an issue. I can help you out. I helped him out. Later, he helped me out on on some legislation that affected Texas Tech, which wasn't a big deal in Port Arthur, but it was a big deal in Lubbock. And I always appreciated him. You know, help me out. So you have to give and take. Uh, Senator Phil Graham, who we've had on the program before, uh, wrote an article not long ago in the uh, Wall Street Journal talking about perfection on legislation is not going to be accomplished. You're going to have to do some give and take. And that we've gotten a lot of people got into politics, and they don't want to vote for something unless they agree with 100% of it. And so it's it's hard to get things done. You know, in the Madison papers, Madison realized that you're, there was going to be give and take. And so, you know, he uh, uh, he wrote in the papers about that give and take and that you have to have some of that. And that, that happens. There are certain special interest groups. If you vote with them 100% of the time, they'll give you an A. But if you vote with them, 99 out of 100, they'll give you F. You know, and, and I mean, it's just uh, don't expect your representative, your senator to agree with you 100% of the time. Now, if they're, you know, 50-50, uh, you probably ought to look around for somebody else to support. But uh, somebody that's pretty close to you, 80-90% of the time, probably somebody, someone that philosophically is very close to you. And uh, so I, I think 
you you have to give your representative and your senator some leeway as they uh, move forward. And if they get completely off base, you know, I, I think you can always, you know, get their attention uh, by, by letting them know. Kansas passed a law one time that uh, kids that are 14 or older couldn't use playground. And uh, they were using playgrounds, and this was a long time ago. But it, it, it evidently it bothered some people, and they had to make a change uh, because it, the – Older kids were taking the playgrounds away from the younger kids. You know, one of the funniest uh, deals and unused in Kentucky, you cannot use a snake in a religious ceremony. And that came in eastern Kentucky in the hills that uh, there were certain churches that used snakes. And I've seen things on TV where they would do that. Uh, I'm I'm not going to be at a church where they use snakes. <laughs> You know, I'll, I, and if I do, I'll take a hoe with me. <laughs> you know, I'll be chopping at snakes. I've, I've never been a, a snake person. And, uh, but they, they were using snakes, and every once in a while, somebody would get bitten and maybe die or have, have problems. But they, they thought that was a big problem in uh, using snakes uh, in religious uh, services, and, and they outlawed it in uh, Kentucky. I just, uh, I, like I said at first, I'd be reluctant, you know, to go to a church where they use snakes and, uh, you know, you bring your own snake. Uh, that still wouldn't help me. Uh, uh, or, the, you know, they're not poisonous snakes. I just, I'm not a snake guy. And uh, there's some people that are. But uh, one of my employees uh, lived when I was in Chancellor. Uh, she lived out on. She and her husband lived out on a ranch down by Spur, and uh, they bought a house that uh, had been vacant out on this ranch for ten or so years. In the first year and a half, they were out there. They had a a hole by the each door and by the barn, and because you dealt with snakes all the time, there was a lot of a lot of rattlesnakes, and. Uh, I had a rattlesnake show at my family reunion one time. A lot of the people got a little upset that they thought that was not. We weren't trying to. We didn't hunt them. We didn't. It wasn't a deal where, you know, hunt the rattlesnake. Uh, it was just we showed them, and, and the guy, you know, we didn't kill any snakes, and he taught the kids a little about the snake and why to stay away from them and give them a lot of. A lot of room. Michigan had a law in, in, in 2013 to make it drunk. Uh, it, it was, it was uh, against the law and a big fine jail time for being drunk on a moving train. And uh, I may have told the story uh, one time about uh, a distant relative of mine was from Indiana and was going to uh, Los Angeles to look for work back in the 1880s. And he was on a train from Oklahoma City to Amarillo, and he was drinking a little whiskey. And a guy came by and said, it's illegal to drink on a moving train. And uh, what he did, he just reached up. And back then, the trains had a, a rope as a metal a cable that you could pull to signal to stop the train, you know, emergency. And so he pulled it. And uh, the train slid to a stop. And, of course, the reason was it, it, they had told him it was against the law to drink on a moving train, so he just wanted to stop the train. That would solve the problem. Well, he got arrested. They stopped in the next town also. He got arrested and wound up in Shamrock, Texas, and then some of uh, he stayed there, and a rancher hired him, and he got a job, and then he started buying little cattle here and there and wound up uh, had kind of a, a ranching, big ranching operation by the time he died. But that's because he was drinking. He was bored, you know. He going from Indiana to Los Angeles on on a train took a long time back then, and he was bored and was having a little. He'd gotten him a half pint, and we had stuck it in his boot. That's you know a lot of people that old song, uh, uh, story bootleggers talking about bootleg bootleggers that they'd have a half pint in their boot. And that way, people wouldn't see it, and they'd go sell it to somebody, and you know and be done with it. And when I was little, they'd talk about bootleggers. 
and the bootleggers drove fast cars, and they'd it have you know two or three cases of beer and and whiskey, and uh, would and the cops would chase them. You know that's the, some of the NASCAR goes back to bootleggers were the first ones to, to drive in races like that because they had the fastest cars. They were trying to outrun the police. You look back to uh, some of the laws passed in Mississippi. They passed law that if there were two people around, you'd get fined if you were swearing. You know, if you said something that was to cut down on people cussing at football games, and, and uh, uh, you know, probably they're trying to satisfy some constituent that complained about it. And that's the reason they were doing it. One of the uh, you know. Unusual laws still in force today is in Nebraska and that you cannot get married if you have a STD, if a sexually transmitted disease. And uh, I, I guess you have to have a test, you know, and that uh, the reason they don't want you know, spread in uh, that way that, uh, you know, if, if you tested positive, then you can't get married. And, uh, you know, there's... There's not a lot of thought going into that, what happens. And I guess they assume that that they weren't going to have any sex until they were married, and that way you'd find out ahead of time. But I, I don't know that that'd be correct in this day and time. In Pennsylvania, you can't have a, a gun or explosives at a wedding and use them. Uh, people were got where they were shooting guns in the air and, and having explosive and having... Instead of having fireworks, a few people got where they were having dynamite. And uh, dynamite and a wedding and alcohol just, you know, doesn't mix, doesn't sound good, doesn't look good, and something that uh, shouldn't do. And so I can understand that Pennsylvania passed that law, and I don't know if there's any need for it now, but uh, there was a need at one time. In, in South Carolina, they had a, a law on seduction, that if you promised to marry a woman and had sex with her, you, you could get a year in jail and uh, that uh, caused seduction. And if you made promises and commitments and and then uh, had sex with her, well, that, that was a, a crime and you get up a j- jail. A year in jail is a long time. People get to thinking that, you know, a jail, well, they only got six months or they only got such and such. You lock yourself in the bathroom some night for about three hours. Don't get out. And the only thing you can have in there may be a Gideon's Bible. That the, it, it, it's a long time, you know, three hours in a little room like that. In Utah, they're pretty strict on alcohol. And uh, you can't have uh, beer above a certain amount. And what it does, it, it keeps them from, it kept them from having beer kegs. They didn't, you know, if they're going to drink beer, that's one thing. But they didn't want them to have a keg or a keg party. And uh, so that passed. And I, I could see that passing in Utah in some states. You, you know, the, the, some that I, I think back that, that were passed at a certain time. In the state of Washington, you cannot use an x-ray machine to help people uh, fit shoes at a shoe store. And uh, they had, uh, had some of those x-ray machines. When I was a little kid growing up, we'd go in the shoe store in Lubbock or Amarillo, and they'd have an x-ray machine where you could, you know, measure your foot and look and see, you know, if it's going to fit well and everything. It didn't really catch on, and so no no one's, uh, you know, uh, enforced that law uh, in a long time. In, um, well, like, there's a lot of blue laws, and uh, when I first went to the legislature, you, you know, retail stores could not open on Sundays, and that... Uh, uh, they they fought it hard, didn't want to have to open on Sundays. And John Hostenback, he was a state representative from uh, Odessa. He was originally from Crane, played football for the Crane Golden Cranes. And uh, he, he, that was his cause. And he finally got the blue laws re- uh, repealed in Texas uh, so that you could go shopping on Sunday. And of course, Sunday's a big day. Saturday and Sunday's where they – most people have their biggest sales in the retail business. State of Virginia has a law that you cannot hunt uh, within 200 yards of a church on Sunday. 
you know, they just don't want the gunfire going off and, and making the people in the church a little nervous. And uh, so I, I can see that, see that, that would would change. But people complain to a representative or a senator about something that's happening, and that's how bills get introduced. And if there's justification, well, you know, you can get them passed. Um, and that if there's not, well, you're probably, you know, wasting your time. There, there's some laws you can see a need, but in Tennessee, the, you got to get a permit to have a pet skunk. Um, you know, you might might uh, add some amend that bill when it's come through. That you need to be tested for your IQ if you got a pet skunk. And uh, but usually it's it's like my wife and I went to Amarillo one time and rented a car, and it was in December, and it was you know, the weekend of the opening of pheasant hunting. And so they gave us these instruct, instructions and said, do not clean birds in car. And she said, that means somebody's done it before. And I said, that's exactly right. And that, uh, you know, you clean a bird in a car, that car is not going to be in very good shape. And you'll probably lose your deposit that you had to put up to keep it safe. You know, I'll tell you one thing that people need to keep in mind. You can have impact on legislation. And uh, just like I've mentioned before, we've talked about it before on a podcast. I had a lady come to a town hall meeting. I had one time, and she said, this is probably a crazy question. She asked me a question, and I later passed a law on that issue, and it uh, was signed by President Reagan uh, in the uh, uh, Rose Garden. And um, with the in the state legislature, uh, you can show up and testify for or against a bill that that you read about, and that uh, they'll let you do that. In Congress, you you can ask to, but they usually have it. So many people on each side in the bill sponsor a call on who he wants to be a, a witness, and the people that are opposing the bill, they'll decide who they want to call as a witness. Otherwise, it just takes forever. In closing, uh, we have a, a process that, like I said, it's like sausage. You don't necessarily watch it being made, but it is a good process that, that eventually works out on laws that affect you, especially in the state legislature, things that affect you on a day-to-day basis. saying of the day was, uh, remember that you don't want to watch sausage or laws being made. Uh, it's not really a great process to watch. 